Hi everybody, this is Tara Woodruff from CoachTaraWoodruff.com, otherwise known as the Helpful Entrepreneur. And um, my neighbor's dog is uh, barking. He's got a rather pleasant bark though, let me tell you, in comparison to Dakota's bark, he's wonderful. So uh, I don't know what's got him excited, but something does. It's garbage day, maybe the big truck's running around the neighborhood, I don't know. I don't even know what it looked like, the light's so bright in my face I can't see the screen, but it's okay, right? Um, well, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time zone you're in when you watch this video. This will be my day 14 of 90. Super awesome. I'm super excited about that. Um, breaking that 10-day point is really great, and I, I know I'm going to do like a shot of tequila or something when I hit the 30-day point. That's pretty cool, because um, I've never done a 90-day straight run of video, so I'm making headway, and I'm excited. Today I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to talk about, you know, stuff. It's uh, beautiful out again. Last night I got my wish, it was 53 degrees. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, yesterday was, most of the day was uh, spent on me learning how to be a plumber. I wonder, I don't think I know any plumbers. See, that's the garbage truck. Are they happy people? <laughs> I want to know. I, well, I want to know, because I know our, our jobs affect sometimes how we are, you know, like, in general, so. I wonder if they're happy people, because, boy, wow, I've got some sort of backup. I'm not sure if it's coming from the, the sewer line to the, you know, to the town, or if it's just right here in the house. I just can't get through it. Um, I'm going to get through today, though. It's, I'm determined, determined to get this finished, and I'm going to do it. Um, we got a 50-foot auger, or a snake, probably the heaviest duty thing I could buy at the store without, you know, spending $200 or $300 on one that's mechanical, you know, or not mechanical, but electric or whatever, or even, I got a very small little twisty on it, so it's, um, it's a little bit challenging. Arsenio came home last night and busted his butt and helped me try to break through something, and he broke through something, because guess what I found in the, in the drain? in the um, tub today. Yeah, it's not pink paint, but it's paint. It's green. So I'm wondering if there's like a ball of paint in there that has just been clogged up with other things that just over the years since the last time I used green paint, or we used green paint, that it uh, finally just is ready to, to come loose. So it's interesting. I mean, that's how long something could be in your your sewer lines or in your main stack that before it even affects the house. So that's pretty crazy. I know every year around this time, full moon in December or January, we usually have a general problem all around all around the neighborhood. So I thought it was that. And I started asking neighbors, hey, you know, because I was going to say, that's it, town. You come here and you fix that sewer line, you know. But it doesn't seem like it's that. So today's goal is first I'm going to go outside to... I found the access to the to it over here, I believe. I believe I did. I'm not sure. The stack is right above the kitchen, right in this wall behind it. The next wall over is the bathroom wall, and it's coming out that area. So I'm hoping that I will be able to get it clear through there. I also want to double check to make sure it is not the town's fault. And I need to find it. I don't know where to find it, and I'm going to look because I do a lot of gardening, so I should have run across this. Um, I, you know, I'm sticking shovels in the ground all the time, so I should have run across this. The only line that I know of that comes from here, this is where the water meter is, right in the corner of this room, that comes across this way, is only this big. So, if that's it, then the people that used to own this house suck. Um, if it's not it, <laughs> there's supposed to be a, a sewer access to run our sewer line, you know, to do the road routing. This is interesting where that comes from, some roots going in trees to your sewer line. I've got to find the one closest to the house, should be in the front yard, it should be wet, and then find the one and run the line straight down to where the city would have theirs and uncover that and see if that one's overflowing. If that one's overflowing for the city, then they have to come clear their line. If it's only overflowing for me and it's dry over there, it's mine. So, um, that's, that's interesting, I learned that yesterday. What else did I learn? I learned all sorts of things about plumbing. There's a gentleman, I think he's, I, well, it sounds like he's from New York. Um, 
he's just an all-around uh, YouTube guy that, that does different things, and he has a little whiteboard, and he's in his basement, and he discusses this. And he was describing the stacks and the vents, the vent that comes out of the house. You know, if you don't have it in your basement, with the vent coming outside, the vent would be just like a, a round thing against the wall. And if it's not there, then there's going to be either a PVC pipe or a cast iron upside down J outside your wall. Well, I don't find any of that anywhere, so I'm assuming that the pipe that I got over here that is not a U, not even kind of close to U, which it's supposed to be a U, it's a T joint, and it's a 6 inch PVC. Um, hopefully that doesn't connect to a 1 inch PVC, or like, that's what I'm going the house, because I don't know what the hell that line's for, because we don't have um, sprinklers. You know, it's not like we have, it would be the type of line you'd see in a, a hard line sprinkler line, not, you know, not the soft lines, the hard lines. So, what the hell that could possibly be there for? I've always been very careful about it, because as soon as I kind of like, oh, because you never know. You just don't know. I mean, they always say, and I, I definitely suggest that you do this, call your utility company, find out where the where stuff's running. Electricity, water, and stuff like that, so you know, pop a spade. Especially with those pointy tips that I like right into a line or something that you need. And if you pop an electric line and you cut it, it could kill you. So be careful. Um, so that's that's what I'm doing today. I've got big plans on that. I want this plumbing problem behind me. And uh, I'm going to make it happen. And I need to know this stuff to a point, you know, when I, when I go and I buy my, my property that I'm looking to buy. Granted, I'm looking to, like, move to South America, and, of course, things are going to be different there, and, you know, that's fine. But if I have a general idea of how to get things straight, that'll be really cool. Um, and also, this has definitely made me aware of a couple of things. You know, like, <laughs> it's definitely helped me define what it is in a man that I want. And um, I've always been attracted to handymen. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I want I want to... The gentleman that I'm going to be with is going to have a general knowledge of electric, plumbing, and carpentry. And also enough money to hire that stuff out so that we don't have to dig up sewer lines and figure things out. But when something happens, they can just bust it out. Because, you know, that's necessary for me because we're gonna, I'm going to be living different, you know. I want to go to the country, and I want to go and um, probably the cheapest way would be to buy a piece of property. And, uh, and, the, and the immigration rules with what I, where I want to go, you have to build something there. And they, they don't have codes, but you still want to be able to live in it, right? So, you got to have basic general carpentry knowledge, um, natural building knowledge, plumbing knowledge. Um, I, was, I was making a joke with my friend yesterday. He was like, oh, maybe, maybe you're ready now for the human maneuver toilets. And he was like, but those are really expensive. And no, they're not. Those are really cheap. They're really simple to build. It's just you, you've you got to um, build them. Um, from what I've seen, they're a simple box with very strong plywood. Um, I'm sure you could use another material. And uh, you make it to the height that's going to be giving you this much room over a five-gallon bucket. And um, sawdust, you know, so you cut a hole. You make a really sturdy box. You cut a hole. You put a toilet seat cover on it. You have a bucket with a shovel of, uh, what do you call it? Sawdust. And you're on. Yeah, that's not expensive. That's cheap. The thing is, this, you know, this is not really what I want to do right now, right here. I don't really have the room to have a separate human compost pile. They take longer. I come up with a bunch of excuses. I'm not ready for that. How's that? <laughs> But if you have a tiny home or one of those those homes that you can pull on a trailer, like the tiny homes, um, or that that's really effective. It's much better than chemical toilets, obviously. And um, if you live out, if you wanted to go off grid and you had, let's say, you bought a piece of property with an old cabin on it and they had outhouses, it's pretty a pretty interesting thing what you can do. And you know, after I find out what happens when you clear a vent. Yeah, that might be even the smartest thing to do. 
there's something I, I'm on city sewer so when you clear certain vents there's a reason why all those pipes go like this and that's to keep the gases from the entire neighborhood from coming into your house and knocking your ass out and, uh, I learned about that yesterday I was like but mind boggling brain hurting horrible wow put masks on put some essential oils on the mask and uh, hope for the best. Oh my gosh, it was brutal. But that we're not having that problem right now, so I'm happy. So I'm just kind of rambling, and that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to have one of those laid back, rambling kind of days on my video. I didn't want to, you know, like lay the law down or give too much uh, nuggets. This is just normal living. When something happens at your house, you need to either get it fixed or learn how to fix it quick. And it, the more knowledge you have, the better. Um, like, you know, if you guys have been following me for a while, I want a homestead, and I got pretty much a little homestead going on, and homesteads, the whole lifestyle, <coughs> excuse my coughing, it's all about working with where you're at to provide the most comfort for your home and family. This book is so awesome. My mom got this for me like six years ago before I ever see I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I wonder if people know about things ahead of time. This has awesome ideas on how to place, you know, how to store vegetables without refrigeration over the, you know, and, and how to grow mushrooms, which ones are edible, and how to tap a tree, and how to grow some bees. You know, these things on an old farm's homestead. Look at that! I just prepared my chickens and they show a different way to, to kill them. Oh, they had it right in here. It's so awesome. But they show you where you want to put your pig pen and why you need a pig. And, um, you know, they, they help you pick up the kinds of pigs that are the best for you. Have a cut with a scythe instead of a lawnmower. I mean, the old homestead literally supplied everything to the family and all they needed to do was, I'm, I'm going to say pioneering or even um, UK home setting. When it was time to leave to go get something, it was something that they just couldn't produce at the house. So you had the women generally took care of. Gosh, what did they take care of? I guess the cooking, the repairing of the house, and the um, cloth making. And the men took care of the husbandry and so forth. And you know, because you would have some pasture animals. Keeping t commending fences and whatnot, and defending property. So, basically, everything that went on in the homestead was everything. So you had your it was like a small village. Your homestead was like a small village. There were sections that were providing something for part of it. So, say, say if your husband or you didn't have blacksmithing capabilities, you would be going to town for the blacksmith. Um, sugar, if you, you know, you know, once a year you might go and get some treats for the kids and get some candy sticks, you know, we still get like candy canes, um, maybe special cloth that they can't produce because the sheep they have aren't making that kind of wool, I mean, I'm serious, there's so much crazy, it's so crazy, and I love it, and um, I think that if you can produce as much as you possibly can on your property, according to the level of knowledge you have, I'm not talking that you got to be the dervishes and know how to produce you know, a $200,000 business in, in organic vegetables off the same size property I got. I don't know how they do it. They got like five goats. I could never sneak a goat on there. They would kill me. You know, they've got multiple chickens. Every single space is utilized to the max. And I think it's beautiful. It doesn't mean you have to be that amazing. You don't have to be that amazing. You just got to do what you got to do to keep it going. So here, on my little homestead, most of our landscaping is edible or usable for construction. I love bamboo, so I did buy bamboo. I've got a Buddha belly, which is edible. Not so great for construction, but would be interesting for some things, maybe even roofing. Um, I've got a green tamar, which is the typical bamboo that you would see at um, like Walt Disney or something like that. You see like a tropical place. Big green stalks, good for construction, good for eating. Um, and really good for windbreak and privacy. The one in the front that we have is a black timor just like the green timor but a black stalk 
Um, not as fast a grower, I mean, maybe it's where it's located, but it's finally taken off. They all grow over 85 feet. They're all edible, and they're all, uh, you can use them for construction. So if worst came to worst, and I needed to build something, or I needed to put a new roof on the chicken coop, and I just didn't have the transportation or the money to buy another um, sheet of metal, I could literally fashion a roof out of that, because I would have the bamboo to do it. And uh, once it gets going, it goes. And I do clumping, so it's not running, so it doesn't take over the whole yard. The clump will get huge, but it's not going to run all over the yard and kill everything. Um, do have some ornaments. I have a, a white bird of paradise. That's back when I wanted it to be an ornamental garden, but I had no clue what I was even thinking about, and then paying any attention to what I was spending at the grocery store for vegetables that were, you know, yeah. do some research, find out what you're eating. Okay, I don't want to get really too far into that. But we have a chicken coop, we have a compost, um, so the chickens, their, uh, their poop is an amazing fertilizer. Gosh, it grows, things grow beautiful with that, um, enriching the soil. The compost, they basically help me break that down. They get the compost and they scratch it and find out something that they want, and this thing, I mean, my compost, I can't, how much... I decided to do an open compost issue with pallets instead of the closed compost because I felt like that never got anywhere. And there's a reason why you're supposed to water your compost and never, for some reason I never got to it. So now the open compost got lots of airflow, things are going through it, and the chickens jump right in there and they scratch away. They don't eat anything they're not supposed to eat and they kind of know how to do that. It's really weird, right? The brain's like this big. They, don't, they won't touch an onion and they ignore avocado if it ends up in the compost. Everything else they go for it, you know. If there's cough grinds, they don't eat them. It's crazy. So I don't know how people come up with this that they, they should eat that when they're not going to eat it. Or at least maybe mine are just smart. I don't know. I do have a rabbit coop, but I do not currently have a rabbit. My neighbor's talking about doing um, meat rabbits. That's super exciting. I sure hope they do, because we are never going to have to buy meat all year. That is crazy. Um, you know, I, I try to make it as as efficient as possible, and it's certainly not perfect in so long ago, go, but, you know, if something goes on in your house, it's, do not do this if you're not, if it's an electrical problem, don't do it. Get someone that knows what they're doing. Don't do it. It'll kill you. There are things you got to turn off first and all sorts of stuff. With uh, snaking, snaking out the vents and the sacks and stuff like that, that's something you can do. Save yourself a lot of money. You can even rent a, a mechanical auger at Home Depot or something like that for 50 bucks. I would definitely suggest you you um, you go and invest in a couple of things. A, a toilet elbow auger, which is called a closet auger. It's much shorter, and it's specifically designed to fit into your toilet without scratching the porcelain. The reason why you don't want to scratch the porcelain is first, it's going to get dirty faster. Second, eventually it'll crack. You don't want that. So you want to have the special closet auger for that. You want to have um, a sink plunger and a toilet plunger, they're different, and you want to have a good 50 foot auger, and if you can get one with an actual crank on it, it would be really super helpful to you, but otherwise, you know, you can do it without it, you don't need to have that, it just makes life better, so, yeah, you know, I'm going on at 18 minutes and 38 seconds, and it's time for me to get to work, and I'm not going to do a much longer. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you for sitting here and listening to me talking about it all. I'm going to put the link to this book, The Concise Guide to Self-Sufficiency by John Seymour. I absolutely love it. It explains everything. It teaches you how to make cider vinegar, wine, jam, syrups, bread, plants, nuts, and berries. It teaches you how to kill and process a chicken. Can you believe it? Cute little chicken coop ideas. Look at this cute little chicken coop. These are chicken runs, actually. Look at this. Yeah, see that? I mean, how cool is that? Gotta love it. So, um, yeah. Start, start, start learning something for yourself. Um, sometimes buying something just doesn't give you. Hey, granted, you know. Hiring a plumber would make me pretty happy right now, but it's not going to happen. So, anyway, I'm going to 
give you the self-sufficiency book. I've got other good news coming, and I'm just not going to talk about it right now because I just want to ramble. I love you all. 20 minutes, two seconds.